Hi everyone, Nick here, welcome back. A lot of people are worried about the US debt crisis and the banking crisis. The US is approaching the debt ceiling with a potentially catastrophic default approaching if politicians don't make a deal. Even if a deal is made, the debt is growing exponentially and it seems like it could cripple the economy long term. At the same time, we are seeing some of the largest bank failures and bank runs in history. People are worried about making sure their money is safe. In this video, I'm going to walk you through three reasons why I don't think either of these matter for investors. First, these crises are very normal. If we go back to just 1940, the debt ceiling has been raised 82 times. Almost every year the debt ceiling is approached and the politicians reach a deal and raise the debt ceiling. Once in a while we do see some kind of gridlock and they take a little while to reach the agreement and we've seen the government shut down at least 10 times. Now this could be a problem if you're a government employee but they even typically get back pay once the politicians raise the ceiling and the government reopens. I think it's almost impossible that politicians will not raise the debt ceiling. There's a simple reason for this. Politicians need money. Programs their constituents depend upon and our society requires need funding. Surely they could cut spending, run a balanced budget, but that is not politically popular. Regardless of how competent or even incompetent these politicians are, all of them realize this reality. It would be suicide for them to drive our economy over a cliff with a real default or do things that are politically unpopular. I think we're just seeing posturing from the politicians to score political points and to get concessions or pet programs funded. Bank failures are more unsettling than the debt ceiling, but they are also very common. Since the 1970s, we've had over 90 bank failures with assets of $1 billion or more. You can see that in 2008, we actually had a much larger inflation adjusted bank failure than Silicon Valley or First Republic. And we also see that they're pretty common having large bank failures going back into the 80s and so forth. If we look at the historical bank failure chart from the FDIC, we can see there's a big surge in bank failures starting in 2008. And even while the economy was recovering, we were seeing 92 bank failures per year in 2011, 51 in 2012, 24 in 2013. We haven't had that many recently, but historically bank failures are pretty common. This is why we have programs like the FDIC. Bank failures are very normal. Historically, the FDIC has worked and the Fed and US government have shown they will backstop these banks in the economy if it gets severe enough. It is a little concerning that the bank failures are looking possibly comparable to the 2008 crisis. But historically, both bank failures and debt ceilings and potential government shutdowns are very normal. This is the first reason why I don't really think this matters much to investors. The second reason has to do with the rising debt, higher taxes and potentially the dollar losing its world reserve currency status. These are all valid concerns and may cause issues for the US and rebalance global economic power. However, these types of shifts are also normal throughout history and they are usually very gradual. Well, I'm a little concerned about these risks for the long term. I don't think they're going to materialize anytime soon, maybe not even within my lifetime. I still think there's a lot of prospects and the rate of human advancement is accelerating. I think we will solve these problems, innovate, and have better quality of lives. Here's a chart from our world and data showing the advancement of technology over a couple millennia. If we go back, we can see some advancements starting actually hundreds of thousands of years ago. But even as recently as the year 1500, the microscope was invented, the steam engine, first vaccines coming in just before 1800. But look at the amount of advancement we've seen since then. Locomotive, photography, telegraph, telephone, automobile, planes, antibiotics, television, nuclear bombs, and so forth. This 
innovation is just accelerating. Now we're getting into things like artificial intelligence, which are very likely going to increase the efficiency and result in a higher quality of life. I don't see these concerns really materializing. Even if the US does lose its more dominant global position, I think globally, we're all going to be better off. The third reason I don't think the debt ceiling or the banking crises matter for investors is they are outside of our control. Human evolution causes us to fear and fixate on potential loss. A rare event could result in death and it only takes one occurrence. It is rational to consider risks and prepare for them, but it is not rational to overly fixate on them and things you cannot control. What can you do about the debt ceiling or banking crises? Very little if not nothing. Watching or reading the news on them daily is not going to help. You need to focus on the things that you can control what you can do to help yourself if these risks materialize. This gets back to basics of financial planning and having a sound investment plan. You should have an emergency fund in FDIC insured banks, probably more than one bank, just in case one of them goes under and you don't have access to your cash for several days. This is just prudent, normal planning. You should spend less than you earn so you can invest. You should build skills so you can contribute more value to society and so you're in demand. You should grow your income so you can invest more. You should focus on having a sound financial plan and asset allocation. After all, asset allocation accounts for 90% of investor returns. See my video on asset allocation, which I'll link up here and below. You should probably consider investing globally so that if the US economy does become crippled with debt and high taxes, you are diversified. Another thing you could potentially do if you live in the US is to diversify your physical and political exposure to one country. You can bank or invest in other countries. I personally plan to start some banking and investing outside the US. As my wealth grows, I wanna buy property outside the US Another way to diversify, you could consider becoming a resident of another country or even obtain a second citizenship. You can obtain citizenship through donation or investment programs. For a lot of people, it can be done through ancestry. Regardless of any other reasons, I think it's worth it just to connect with your heritage. I'm currently in the process of acquiring Hungarian citizenship through ancestry. I've really enjoyed learning the language about my ancestors and the culture. Or in Hungarian, nagyon szeretem tanulni a nyelvet a felmenőimről és a kultúráról. This is why I decided to apply for citizenship. My application forms, biography, in-person interview at the consulate, and follow-up phone call from Budapest were all in Hungarian, no English. Even though this wasn't easy, it has been a very rewarding experience and I would recommend it to anyone that has this option. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear more about my journey or different citizenships and residency options. So this is why I don't think the debt crisis or banking crises matter for investors. The first, they are very common and happen regularly throughout history. Second, even though there is some risk of the US being overburdened with debt, we still have very good prospects, a lot of innovation, and the global economy I think will do well long term. And third, this is just outside of our control and we need to focus on things that are in our control. Wealth isn't built by speculating or worrying about banking crises, debt ceilings, or other trends. These are actionable or in your control. Wealth is built by contributing value to society, spending less than you earn, and developing and following a sound financial plan. That plan should account for these common risks and seek for good ways to protect from them. This is what's in your control and that's what matters the most. Thanks for watching everyone. If you got value from the video, make sure to press the like button, subscribe, and share it with your friends. It helps support free financial education. Later.